Hey everyone, so I decided to teach you all how to make creamy tomato basil soup. It's a great thing now that we've made it to the Wyoming winters and it's just really good. So I always hate when I find a recipe and they don't tell me what I need, so I always end up using a smaller pan than I need or an extremely large pan or anything like that. So here are all the items that you'll need for this recipe, um, and I put the total down there too because as a college student I worry about that sometimes, the price it'll take to make a certain dish. Um, a lot of these things you probably have, like you don't really need a cutting board, it's just nice to have one, knives, spoons, everything like that. Um, the good thing is I know Dollar Tree has a lot of these. So if you are a college student and you don't have them, just go to Dollar Tree. Don't spend the $5 at Walmart for a bowl. Um, so ingredients, all of these are from Walmart, but they're all great value prices because it's the same thing. It's just a little bit cheaper. And again, I'm assuming that you'll probably have some of this, like salt and pepper, $5.00. That's for an entire thing of salt and an entire thing of pepper, which I'm assuming you probably have. If not, you could always go to a fast food place too and probably steal one of their little packets and it'll be fine. Um, olive oil, you probably already have that for cooking. So three tablespoons, it's not gonna cost you 250. But if you don't have any of this, it'll be 19. So assuming that you did not have any of these items or ingredients, the total will come out to around $41, which is sad, but, you know, if you really want homemade tomato soup, it's what you gotta do. So, as for the cooking portion, another thing I hate with recipes is when it starts out and it's a long rambling story about how they made it for their husband or wife for kids, and they just loved it, and they take it to every family gathering now, and we don't need to know, we just want the instructions. So here are all the instructions, so that you can know what's going on in each step, and sort of pace yourself. It's on all the other slides as well, but this way you just know what to expect throughout the whole process. So first step is always prep. Wash your veggies, you're going to dice the red onion, or chop, I don't really know the difference, just make it small little squares. And mince the garlic. Um, in case you didn't know, the best way to get rid of the uh, peel, basically, on the garlic is to just take out the little pods and squish it with the flat of your knife. I wasn't able to get a video of it, but that way it peels off really simple and then just Basically, just chop until it's small. Um, you can also shred or chop the basil if you want to while you have your cutting board out and it's all nice. So step two is saute. I don't really know what saute means. To me, it means lots of oil and get color on it. So basically, what you're going to do is heat up the oil. I like around four on electric stove or medium low on a uh, flame and you're going to add the onion first this is because the garlic will burn before the onion and you really don't want that so add your onion add your garlic um, when you finally get some color on both of them so you can see in the video it's kind of uh, there's some goldish brown on there you're going to add your entire can of crushed tomatoes and your chicken stock and it is a lot, but it happens. After that, you're going to add some seasoning, salt and pepper. I never really add seasoning, but I know a lot of people get angry if you don't include that. So I figured I'd just make a little note in there. If you want salt and pepper, this is the time to add it, okay? So next step, you're going to simmer. Uh, the video, it's more of a boil in the video, I'm not going to lie. But basically you want some bubbling and you want to simmer for at least five minutes. The more you simmer, the more the flavors will incorporate together and it'll just turn out really nice. 
After that, you're going to blend it together. Um, the blender that I listed, the $10 one, it's the cheapest one from Walmart. Um, it's really nice, it works well. The only thing is you can't blend hot foods, so you need to wait for it to cool beforehand. If you have an actual blender, it might be different. You might be able to get away with it being a little bit warmer, but always make sure to check your instruction manual beforehand. So when you blend it, it's going to be red when you put it in, and while you're blending, it'll turn into a orangish sort, sort of color from the air and everything. So that's how you know it's fully blended. It will still be somewhat chunky. So if you don't like that, probably don't make this recipe. But it still, it tastes really good. So just go with it. So we have the tomato part of the soup. Next we uh, add the creamy and the basil part. So you're going to add one cup heavy cream. I had already used half of my heavy cream. So I just poured the rest of the jug in there. And your basil, I just shredded it. You're not going to strain the basil out or anything. So you really want to have bite-sized pieces instead of entire leaves in there. Next, you're going to bring it back up to a simmer. This is more of a simmer in here than a boil. And again, another five minutes. The longer you wait, the better it'll taste. But it's basically just getting it back up so it's warm. Step nine, you're going to serve it, so just keep the basil in there. I like to add a healthy serving of uh, Parmesan cheese in there. I think the uh, bitter kind of tanginess of the Parmesan really complements it. And also, while you're simmering it for that last time, you can also make a grilled cheese. Um, if you're making homemade tomato soup, I think you should go extra on the grilled cheese don't buy the craft sliced singles buy some actual cheese from like the deli counter and it'll just taste a whole lot better and it'll really go with this and step 10 enjoy your soup you made it it'll taste good and i hope you enjoy